Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, <coughs> your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video casts. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing their surgical clerkship rotation and the surgical trainees as well. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today in this episode, I am going to talk one more scrotal swelling mind map. So I am going to talk only regarding the mind map for the task and test. You see, I have already created a longer version of task and test and I request all my viewers to view that video also. So here in this video, I am going to talk only about how you can utilize the mind map to effectively read all the important points about the task and testers. That's what I am going to highlight in this video. So coming to the various causes of the total swellings, broadly we can divide it into acute painful scrotal swellings and chronic painless scrotal swellings. The acute painful scrotal swellings are the tarsal and testis, acute epididymocytis, and tarsal of testicular appendages. And this is what I am going to cover in this video today. Of course, the chronic painless scrotal swellings are hydrocele, epididymal cyst, spermatocele, chronic epididymocytis, testicular tumor, and varicose. So today I am going to talk about the acute painful scrotal swellings, the tarsan testis. So this is the diagnostic algorithm. So if you are <coughs> going to encounter a patient with scrotal swellings, you have to look for, are you able to get above the swelling? And then are you able to identify the testis and epididymis separately? Whether the swelling is transluminant or if the swelling is tender or not. These are the four things you have to look in all scrotal swellings. If the swelling is not confined to the scrotum and if the patient is having cough impulse, the swelling is reducible, testis is palpable separately and if it is opaque, then we are dealing with a case of inguinal hernia. Suppose if the swelling is not confined to the scrotum alone, but the patient is not having any cough impulse, the swelling is not reducible, testis is not palpable separately, and it is brilliantly transluminant, then we are dealing with a case of infantile hydrocele where the upper border of the hydrocele will extend up to the internal ring level. So that is why we couldn't make out the upper border properly. If the swelling is confined to the scrotum, then you have to look whether the testis and epididymis are separately palpable or not. If they are not separately palpable and the swelling is opaque and if it is not tender, then probably we are dealing with a case of chronic hematocele or gamma of the testis. If the swelling is tender, then we are dealing with either tarsan or severe epididymocytis or acute hematocy. <coughs> if the testis and epididymis is not palpable separately and the swelling is transluminant, then we are dealing with a case of vaginal hydrocele. If the testis and epididymis is palpable separately, and if the, if the swelling is transluminant, then we are dealing with a case of epididymosis. If the testis and epididymis is uh, palpate, able to palpate separately, 
but the swelling is opaque and if it is not tender we are dealing with a testicular tumor if it is not tender then it could be a tuberculous epididyma ocaritis if it is tender probably an acute epididyma ocaritis so this diagnostic algorithm is very important to clinch the correct diagnosis and this is the mind map which i told you already it is very important to revise the whole syllabus of general surgery within few hours you can revise the whole thing if you are able to know i mean how to utilize the mind map effectively so first thing is the eto pathogenesis what happens in the testis is testis will go for what is called inversion of the testis the testis will rotate towards the midline if it is on the right side it will rotate clockwise that is this is the torsion if it is the left side of the testis it will rotate anti clockwise towards the midline so the whole not only the testis the spermatic cord also rotate and this is what is called torsion testis this may be precipitated by muscular exertion or trauma it is very common in those who are having undescended testis is very common undescended testis is more prone to go for torsion and especially those who are having what is called belt clafer deformity or yet <coughs> intravaginal torsion type this is very common coming to the various types of torsion it may be extravaginal which is common in neonates or it could be intravaginal which is common in adolescent patient intravaginal means the torsion is happening inside the tunica vaginalis covering and another very rare thing is mesorchial that is a mesentery in between the epididymis and the testis but this is very very rare mesorchial torsion coming to the history you the patient will tell that they are having very very severe painful hemiscrotum one side of the scrotum will be very painful scrotal swelling also will be there one hemiscrotum and patient also will be having nausea and vomiting coming to the signs scrotal skin will be edematous and erythematous there will be very very tender testis if you try to palpate the testis patients won't allow you even to touch the that one side of the uh, hemiscrotum because it is very very pain tender or painful ex extremely painful that is what is called tender and if you carefully see the side which is affected will be high place testis will be there and this is called deming sign in the in the opposite side if you examine it may be the testis may be horizontally placed testis in the normal side and this is called angel sign will be positive and pain is not relieved on elevation of the testis and this is called prehensile sign prehens prehens sign yeah and the cremasic reflex usually absent in the affected site diagnosis is mostly clinical but it should be confirmed by doing a doppler ultrasound or the duplex scan where there won't be any blood supply to the <coughs> main body of the testis there won't be any blood supply but the periphery of the uh, testis there will be increased blood supply scrotal scintigraphy nowadays we are not doing it because now we are having the powerful or the very effective the duplex scan is more than enough you need not do scrotal scintigraphy coming to the treatment same side or the affected side you have to explore do detarsion and then you have to do what is called fixation archaeopexy you have to suture the testis the tunica albuginea of the testis to the <coughs> to the dartos muscle with 
non absorbable suture material you have to do it in three areas in the upper pole in the middle of the testis and in the lower pole of the testis and you have to explore the normal contralateral side also you have to explore and you have to do what is called prophylactic fixation orchiopexy should be done in this side because majority of the normal side also may have this bell clover deformity in order to prevent it in uh, occurrence in the future we had to do what is called prophylactic fixation orchiopexy if the doppler ultrasound or the dupl duplex scan facility is not available then you have to explain the uh, explain the problem with the parents and better to explore rather than waiting for too long you have to explore it before 6 hours coming to the treatment algorithm how to manage a case of acute scrotum you have to rule out the testicular torsion by what is the history you will get in testicular torsion these are the three things you have to differentiate differential the one is testicular torsion <coughs> the acute epididyma arcades or the testicular appendageal torsion these are the three main things and some of the other things also you have to rule out okay we will see one by one so suppose if it is testicular torsion in the history okay you have to see whether it is neonate or the adolescent male patient there will be acute scrotal pain systemic symptoms may be there like nausea and vomiting the pain is sudden and it is very severe there may be non specific abdominal pain sometimes there may be intermittent pain in the abdomen probably this is not due to testicular torsion because if it is testicular torsion the pain should be continuous not intermittent if it is intermittent then you have to idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura you have to uh, suspect coming to the physical examination the cremastic reflex will be absent on the affected side there will be high riding testicle on the affected side uh, deming sign and in the contralateral normal side the testis may be lying horizontally and this is called bell clover deformity or angels sign so what do you have to do emergency genito urinary consult or urology consult you have to get immediately and then it should be explored immediately in the operate operation room you have to explore the uh, problem if it is a definite case of torsion if it is a doubtful case then you have to do the duplex scan or the um, <coughs> doppler ultrasound you have to do and there is no role for manual detorsion if if the uh, uh, facility is not available then you have to explain it to the parents and you have to better explore it suppose if it is a epididyma arcades okay in the history age is not pubertal boys it is post post pubertal boys are in usually elderly or middle aged uh, person it is insidious in onset not acute onset slow, slowly progressive pain there may be history of uti pyuria or history of trauma <laughs> so if you go for physical examination there may be tender epididymis if you palpate there will be tenderness swelling and induration will be there prehen sign is positive if you elevate the affected i mean testis the pain will get relieved this is what is called prehen sign so what you have to do okay here also you have to do the doppler ultrasound where you can see the blood supply is intact blood supply is not affected the treatment is there is no need for any exploration you have to treat the condition with antibiotics and anti inflammatory drugs the other important differential diagnosis is appendageal testicular appendageal torsion the age is pre pubertal boys the same 
age group as for the tarsen testis there may be acute scrotal pain but if you carefully examine the uh, scrotal skin you can make out the blue dot sign and the cremastic reflex will be intact you can e also feel the tender nodule on the upper pole of the testis <coughs> so what you have to do do the doppler ultrasound or the duplex scan which you can pick up the low echogenic area with central hypoechogenicity that is nothing but the tossed appendages of the testis treatment is usually conservative <coughs> surgical if the patient is coming already late then within one or two days it will become all right so we need not surgically intervene but if the patients are going to come to us very early then we can explore and we can even excise the tossed appendicular uh, tars tars deposa so we have to rule out the other causes also like the obstructed or <coughs> irreducible hernia phoneous gangrene hydrocele acute idiopathic scrotal edema uh, trauma varicocele or sometimes referred pain these are all the various other causes you have to rule out you should know how to rule out the tarsen testis from acute epididyma arcades clinically this is not po uh, possible always you must do a duplex scan to differentiate the tarsen testis from epididyma arcades but there are some clinical uh, points to rule out acute epididymis from testicular tarsen acute epididymis is usually gradual onset of scrotal pain whereas the testicular tarsen is sudden onset of scrotal pain normal cremastic reflex in acute epididymis arcades whereas in testicular tarsen the cremastic reflex will be absent usually no nausea and vomiting <coughs> in acute epididymis arcades whereas in testicular tarsen nausea and vomiting is common more common in sexually sexually active male patients acute epididyma whereas testicular tarsen is more common in adolescent and in men without evidence of any inflammation or infection hpi or the history and physical exam support a diagnosis of urethritis or urinary tract infection here there is no evidence of any uh, urinary tract infection in case of testicular tarsen in acute epididyma arcades you can start empirical treatment and you can follow up whereas you can uh, he, a testicular tarsen is a surgical emergency and within 6 hours we have to intervene intervene surgically otherwise we cannot salvage the testis so this is the tabular column where i have given all the differential diagnosis for the scrotal swelling and i have given the important points like etio pathogenesis history signs the investigations and treatment so you have to compare the etiology uh, uh, pathogenesis for what is the etio pathogenesis for hydrocele what is it for varicocele what is it for testicular carcinoma everything you have to read it what is called i told you already you have to do what is called vertical reading instead of re reading it horizontally you have to read vertically so that you will be knowing what uh, symptom wise what is the difference between hydrocele and testicular carcinoma easily you can make up by doing this compare and contrast and vertical reading you can easily clinch the correct diagnosis so thank you very much for watching this video kindly subscribe to this channel and share these videos in your social media kindly click the bell button also to get notified regarding my latest uploads thank you once again for watching this video let us meet in an at another episode until then bye bye